A labyrinth is an ancient spiritual tool. It is a contemplative walk in meditation for anyone who steps onto it. Don't worry, there are no wrong turns or dead ends. This is what makes a labyrinth different from a maze. As folks follow the circular path, they're given an opportunity to move from the realm of achievement, where we spend so much of our lives, to the realm of acceptance, where grace and forgiveness have more sway. In the words of St. Augustine, Salvatore Ambulando, it is solved by walking. My name is Will Hinton, and this is a short film about the Lewisburg College Labyrinth, which was built during the summer of 2011. The story of our labyrinth begins down at the Tar River, which winds its way through Franklin County. The county was named for author, printer, scientist, inventor, and statesman Benjamin Franklin, who was our nation's first ambassador to France. The county seat was located on the Tar River at the joining of several Native American trading routes and was named Louisburg after King Louis XVI of France. The founders of the village of Louisburg reserved the highest elevation above the river as a town commons area to be used for education. That commons area is located about a half mile to the north and about a hundred feet in elevation above the river. By 1787 an academy was built on that parcel of land which would be the genesis of Lewisburg College. The Lewisburg College Labyrinth is located in front of the Robbins Library which is in the heart of that campus. The Tar River is a watery path that wanders through the Piedmont of North Carolina from Lewisburg to Rocky Mount to Greenville, on towards Washington and the Pamlico Sound. Its meandering route was formed by nature long before any human contact was made, and this ancient river calls to mind the paths of our own lives. Sometimes in our life, we're able to choose the path that we walk on. At other times, we find ourselves confronted with journeys down paths which are not of our making. Our Lewisburg College Labyrinth is a symbol of these paths. All right. 
Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, today is May the Thursday, May the 27th. Uh, we're a little over two weeks into the project. Um, this is the scale drawing that I've done of the Lewisburg Labyrinth. And what you're looking at is about 39 feet, 39, 40 feet from here to here. Everything that's the red color is the brick, and these paths are cast cement. Um, so if you look over here, the inside, this rosette that we're doing this pattern, I've taken that and I've blown it up to life size, and it's the size of these white boards. Uh, and then within, within this rosette, I've gone around and You can see the, uh, the shape of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these panels and cut brick out, sort of as a, a pattern, a template. And then these will form the central, the central part of our lab. Um, and what we're doing this morning is actually measuring these concentric rings around a pattern. So what I've done to what I've done to do that with is I've made this a radius. And you understand that this is a 17 inch path, then 8 inches of brick, then 17 inch pass and 8 inches of brick. So what I've done is I've measured from the center and I've made these marks 17, 8 around the radius. And once I made that mark, I just uh, came down here with a carpenter square and marked that on the concrete. So now what I'll do is I'll take a, take a small little piece of wood as a sort of a temporary sort of guide to where that pencil is going to be when it goes down to cement. And I'll take that and get it square and tap that in and tap it in. And then from there, I'm taking these pencil and putting it on that spot and then making a mark. So it sort of makes itself. So it's a so if the labyrinth is a meditative walking tool and certainly this radius is a tool that we can make these concentric rings. So after I go around there, you can see if I, you can start to see now how these bricks will form that path that goes all the way around and this brick will form that all the way around. So today's work is to get the drawing done, move from the scale to life size. Okay? I'm finding is, is that I take my I take these what I'm gonna call skew backs and put one like this and one like this and put them together. So I put those together, then I put one straight to the side. Then I take the two that I've got cut like this and put one piece to the side. So now it's actually twice as many cut it's cut cut straight. Cut, cut, straight. Cut, cut, straight. Instead of cut, straight, 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 cut, straight, 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 straight. So that's how I'm working my way around the circle.
what I do is I take this, um, I'm taking this thin set mortar straight out of the bucket here, and I'm putting it next to these, these bricks that I already have thin set mortar down. And the, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to create a, um, um, a mechanical bond between the, between this layer of concrete and the concrete that I'm going to pour on top of this. And another thing it does is it, you know, this thin set mortar is the strongest stuff. It's got so much acrylic in it that it physically bonds the brick in place. So it has sort of like a, like a backstop effect on the brick. So it's working laterally on the brick to hold that in place. And it's also working mechanically up and down with the layer that I pour on top of it. So then after I, they're dry cut, and I move them over here on the boards, and then I butter the, um, put the mortar on that slab, and, then I, and it stays wet enough that I can adjust them some. And after I, after I go over and be sure they're in the right place, and I, I've got this little tamper, and I go over them with this. <laughs> 